Right now we have a talk about our dear, dear subtitles team who've provided subtitles for all the Wintergarten SMOK videos. So please give it up for Doro and Jaybird. Thank you. So, yeah, we were subtitling all the videos from Wintergarten and also now from SMMK because as you might know, we do also videos on the SMMK channel for the MMX, the restoration process where you already learned a lot about it. And yeah, we want to talk a bit on how we did it. Now, why do we do subtitles? We got a worldwide audience, so we got an audience with various needs. First of all, Martin has admitted several times that he makes videos in Swinglish, which is actually Swedish English. So people, even if they speak English, they might not always get the first time what he means, and we try to figure that out, make a subtitle of it, and then people can read it. The deaf, hard of, reading uh, hard of hearing people, they cannot hear Martin's voiceovers, they cannot see him at that moment, so they can't do lip reading. We provide them with a way to get what is going on in the scene. Also, Martin frequently switches to, for example, a drill, or you can hear something going off in the background. And then we provide a sound caption to give that context, like what is going on, why is this suddenly a very focused scene with seemingly nothing going on. The non... Hello. Audio went out. Everything okay? Audio Looking to dropped. the audio desk now. Well... We should have recorded our speech to now just show it. Oh, there we are back. Yeah, the audio went missing for a second. If we had done this as a pre-recorded show, then we could have subtitled it and the people at home could have followed along. Oh, well. Uh, the audio went and that's it. Non-native speakers, when they see the Swinglish uh, videos, well, it might be better if they can see a word spelled out so that they can actually look it up without having to hear and then think like, what is he actually saying? Uh, just read it, find it, and you don't need to look too much at context. Then there is also the fun people asking like, hey, what music are you playing? Because they like the background track, so we provide or try to find to our best ability what music is going on, when it is going on, when it stops, and put that in a caption down below. And of course, the final thing is if you've got somebody who doesn't even speak English, once we got it written out with timing and everything, people who speak German, French, Spanish, they can translate the English text to something in a native language. Yes, and then the next thing is uh, the history of subs. Um, you might think that subs were a new thing uh, for now during uh, TV YouTube sessions times, but actually uh, they have been quite around for a long time, um, and we have some examples like, oh, that was one too quick. I wanted to go that one. Um, in the early years, way before 1900, when there were already operas shown around Europe, the world, basically. Most of the operas were held in Italian, because that was the music or the, the language of music. Uh, even uh, Beethoven, Bach and all those did uh, operas in Italian. But most of the people didn't speak that, so for that also in theater times already subtitles, or in that case it were surtitles because they were above the screen, um, were already put in the theaters so that the audience could follow along. Then later, uh, when um, the movies started, it were silent movies, and we have a small example on here. Hopefully, that's now also playing.
So that was an example shortcut from a Buster Keaton movie. And in former times, around at the end of, um, yeah, it, it was used, those interlaced, those black screens with the white text on it to show actually what was meant and to give some background because in former times, they only had the film, but um, no speech or sound or anything recorded. And the music which you heard in the background that was actually played by a theater organ, um, which could be also visited at Siegfried's Muse uh, music cabinet. So they also have a theater organ there, um, which produced those sounds, sound effects and everything. Later on, then in around about 1970s, uh, it started that those so, uh, screens would also be used then on TV movies. First, it was only on cinema movies, but in around 1970s, it also started then to be presented on TV shows. And today, subtitles can be found everywhere. Blu-ray, YouTube, whatever media you have where you can switch them on and off. So, yeah. And one current thing you might notice that those Intel titles what they are called, are uh, also used today, for example, at, oh wait, that one. You might recognize the style of it. No, it's not Star Wars. It's Spaceballs, but yeah. Um, so that is used also today for giving background of the history so that you don't have to tell 30 minutes of video material to get the background story. Therefore, also interlace will be used today. Now, does subtitles team doing subtitles for Wintergarten is not hired by Martin. It's basically a community effort where somebody started and said to Martin, like, you know, we might not know each other, but I don't like the automatically generated YouTube subtitles. Can I fix them, please? Doro will go into more details, but right now the team is still a community effort. People chip in and, and give some of them time. And then once Martin pushes a video, we can start subtitling it at best within uh, a day, sometimes within a week, or it takes a little longer. But it remains separate from Wintergarten. Doro will give you on how this actually all started. Yes, so once upon a time, in the year 2020, I think many of you will remember that in March, some small thing like a pandemic happened around the world, which leads to um, people or kids to not be able to school anymore. Uh, they had to be home teached. And during that time, Joanna, who unfortunately cannot be here this week, um, had the idea of subs because she was sitting next to her son who was home teached and she wanted to un help him. And while we, uh, she was there watching the Wintergarten videos, but she wanted to disturb uh, her son. So she turned on the captions and noticed that's crap. So many of those captions which were in there were really not good. And Joanna is a teacher. And so she, not she noticed cannot be stay like that. She started to editing that. Uh, but it took too much of time to really get them nicely and clean. So in May then, she had the idea to support or yeah, spread the idea of it. In May, the current Wintergarten Discord server was set up and then she there mentioned her idea. And within one or two weeks, she got so many support from the community, uh, which bulbed that. Bulbing was the idea vault thingy. And Martin or Hannes reached then out to Joanna, like, yeah, that's a very good idea. I'd like to have my videos supported or understandable by more people. And that's how it, yeah, the idea came up. In June then, uh, Joanna together with JJ, set up the system. We will talk about the system in the background in a few slides. And in August, Joanna was then also promoted by Martin to a YouTube editor. So she had full access to the YouTube channel of Wintergarten, which was 
a very new thing, which but helped us immensely to really get the updates of the subtitles to a working state more or less immediately. Because before that, it was an editor who always had to approve and upload those changed subs. And in the end of 2020, uh, YouTube decided that it is not longer possible that public submissions could be done to subtitles. So it was banned by them, and we had to change tools for that one. So our system. So originally, we used YouTube editor, basically did everything in there. Then we thought, like, OK, we can use a uh, a tool which we got free access to called Amara. We'll go more into detail into it later. And then there's, of course, the whole process. How do you organize tens, twenties, thirties of people all doing the same thing, all like, oh, there's a new video out. I want to do this part. I want to do this part. So we start with a spreadsheet. This one, though, is just only the first thing. When people are collaborating, everybody has their own style. So at some point, you need to agree on, like, standards like units, I say one millimeter, you write it as a number and double M. One you spell out, two you spell out, three you spell out, 12, no, well, we write that as numbers. Certain things like that, you agree on how words are spelled. Um, there is, of course, like making what is a good subtitle, because Martin can also be challenging in having run on sentences and continuing this, so and this, so and that, and also, and goes on and goes on, and also uses sound effects. So from time to time, we need to agree on when does a boom sound show up. And preferably, that's all on the exact same time, but still keep it readable, because of course, you can't have something just flash up and go away, because people will be flabbergasted at, like, what did I just notice? Uh, yeah, it is, is about like standardizing and writing down what everybody should be doing to make a good subtitle. We'll go through the other tabs, so Doro can now take <laughs> yeah. the most fun one where we document the team members. Right, so we had in the time we did subtitles a lot of team members. We are currently at 58 team members who are actively currently still working on subtitles or did that in the past. So a big shout out to them. Without the support of all those, it wouldn't have been possible to do the subtitles for videos within 24 hours after release, because that was always our main goal. Um, oh, uh, again, one, one, one too fast. Yes. We were a team of people from many different countries, from all over the world. We had people from, or have still have people from Egypt, from India, from Norway, from, yeah, more or less everywhere. And one thing is for the translations, especially to always use the same terminology. So therefore, we also put in a terminology sheet one important part was also names, because if you hear a name, you always don't know how that name is spelled. So for example, we did that to have always the name correctly. We did that for the parts, so that the parts are always mentioned the same way, and the spelling of that is right. And then especially for translations, so that the words, or yeah, terminology is always used in the same way in each language to have it consistent. That was one big part. And we are still not finished with translating these uh, subtitles. There's a lot of leftovers. And next one is then a little... OK, again, too again fast. Once. Sorry. Yeah, I want to rush through this so Martin can come over here and lure all the people in here. <laughs> Um, to track our overall status, we keep a list of all the videos that Martin has made with speech in it. Music videos, we document it sometimes, but mostly for sound effects. The Marble Machine video itself, we edit at some point the sound effects, just because that's the most well known. Although it is a bit silly at times to see, boom, symbol crash when the symbol is in view. But it's the thought that matters. 
overall we track numbers so we can say like oh I'm working on number 152 instead of like oh yeah we're fixing this and this and this today we have a coordinator for each episode who does the talking to people or just cut it first and says like okay I'll do the first part you do this and this and this and this other parts and if you are done I'll merge them back together to one full length subtitle for this video we got reviewers so people can have a second look at it, can then discuss with the reviewer like, oh, I would do this that way, I would make, give more time to a certain phrase or split it or make it shorter. Or that word is simply spelled wrong. We'll get to more to that on that later, because sometimes even the Swinglish can get confusing when uh, we start from an automatic subtitle and it got something that looks like it's right, but actually isn't right. More on that later. On the right, we also track translations. That field is, again, pretty much empty. But for English, we got, in this case, all 11D, which means like, OK, it has gone through all the stages. It's done. Next slide is then once we get a new video or someone that hasn't been worked on due to various in real life uh, things. We make a sheet for each video, say like, okay, we'll split it into 10. 10 parts, okay, it's video of 26 minutes long, so about two minutes each. And then a person can claim just a piece of the video. We also can then, we write on a Dropbox account like, okay, this is the first part, second part, third part, fourth part. The person who is coordinating is then responsible for merging all those back together and getting the final result, which can be uploaded to YouTube. Here's a bit of our sheet where we got statistics. Yes, so in total we have now 269 videos from Martin on both channels. Yes, you all know the Wintergarten channel, but there's also the Wintergarten 2 channel, which he used a lot for live streaming, daily updates. And we try to subtitle all those videos. And we, as you can see in the statistics, for the MMX videos, we have covered all in English. For other videos on his main channel, which are not related to the MMX, we have still some leftovers to do. For the Wintergarten 2 channel, we did all of them. And for the MM3, we have currently a little bit of backlog. So there we only have currently 19 completed and 15 videos are still open. And whoever wants to help us is welcome to do so. Because as you see, a big backlog, we need help. And that one, as you can see for translations, it's lo looking much worse um, as we are all trying to do the subtitles in English first. That's our main priority. We need also people for the other languages, because for the other languages, we always want to have two person working on subs. Like what Bert already said, we have uh, the one who is editing it, and then we have the reviewer of it to proofread the changes, the text. And for getting proofreaders or two people uh, speaking the same language um, is not that easy, even though we are 50 people in our team. But not everyone has time at every time. Um, and we need, as I said, people whose their yeah, main language is that second language, so to have a proofread. And to add, it is quite necessary because Sometimes we get a submission where we're thinking, is this Google Translate? And they say, like, no, until we start poking a bit and they say, OK, maybe, and then end up with, yeah, OK, I, I winged it, and maybe it needs some review. Okay. But oh, well. Why always? Amara. Oh, no. No, that one first. Yes. Two, as I before said, get the music right. We also keep an entire list of backlog of all the kinds of music that Martin has used in the past. He sometimes reuses them. You can see uh, the top ones are the most used tracks, and then we keep part of which episodes they were in. And the more to the bottom you go, of course, the, the rarer the song. Yeah. Once in a while, we don't recognize it, so 
I guess Martin has also got his uh, unfinished studio tapes and sometimes he uses that in his build videos. So once in a while we also get to name one, especially in live streams for fun, then we come up with the name fitting the video or the atmosphere. Oh, and and by the way, all which is green are released videos or songs, so it can be found somewhere online. Uh, the red ones are not released officially. Yeah, we keep track of those so we can mark them as unreleased or released by Winter Gartan or a different artist. Then the current tool we're using to do or used to use, it's sometimes uh, still in use with the public and free version. Yes, because we had another change after we had to change from everybody can submit subtitles to Amara as a tool. Uh, we then had another change that our subscription to Amara is now out. But yeah, that's a different story. I'll show you what it is. So Amara is a tool um, which was promoted by YouTube for doing subtitles actually and having them in the collaborative work. We had a group, a Wintergarten writers team, that's how we called our team, where every video was put into that team and only people who were part of the team were able to change the subtitles. Uh, with the free version of Amara, everybody could link it to Amara, the YouTube video, and do subtitles and upload them and then change them again. Slight difference, of course, is that with the team, we could actually couple it directly to YouTube. So if two people were collaborating and the first one uploaded something and the second said, OK, I like it, it could go directly to YouTube thanks to the link in the background. With a free version, everybody can make a subtitle, but it doesn't get on YouTube, of course. So then somebody like a YouTube editor still needs to grab it, put it online, and that's extra work. With this tool, you could do all at once. Yes, so that was how uh, the tool looked like. The most useful thing on the paid version, which is unfortunately not on the free version, is the waveform, the line in the middle, because there you really see when do you have sound, when does the sound starts, and sound is everything. Every background sound, every speaking, everything. And with that, we were able to really get the captions. Like here, it says in, I guess, Spanish, do todos los muros. I don't know. I'm not a Spanish speaker. Um, when those lines do start, so that we really can adjust the timing of it, that it's fit to what you actually hear. And we have different languages to translate into, and that tool really helped us to fit that. It did some proofread and not proofreading. It did some proofings like that the line of the subtitle has not been too long because if it's a four-line text, it's much too big for the screen on YouTube, so it has to be split into multiple lines, for example. We had a version control in there so that we can compare the original one to the next version or compare a English version to the translation to have that side by side and things like that. And what we also had always was a four eyes principle. So the one who is finally or who is editing, submitting the first version of the subs in Amara is not allowed to actually publish that. It had always to be a second person who's then finally pulling the publish button to really have then the updated version available on YouTube. And you heard now a lot of the process. And for people who wanted to join the team, we had to show somehow the yeah, process map flowchart. That's that one. It is a bit of who, which role has who, or who has which role, like the coordinator, the reviewer, who is doing what. And that was for if a new video has been released. And if we had to translate videos, we have this flowchart, which is a bit different, because also we had the issue that in Amara we had in total, I think, four language slots available. But we wanted to start on many different languages. So we could not use every language as a fixed slot. 
And then there was the thing that we had in YouTube itself, which was then again by, to be done by someone with editor rights in YouTube to set there the language. For example, we did a language in Spanish, labeled Spanish, but the actual language was Italian. Then we had to, in YouTube itself, remark then that to Italian that it really fits because we were ran out of slop slots. Yes, that is just a very short overview of the process we had in the past. Nowadays, without Amara, we still have a similar process, but not yet fixed, really. But we are working on it. Definitely. So now, well, for some might it fun, some might say, like, ooh, this odd. YouTube, when Martin uploads a video will generate an automatic subtitle. So when you up to enable captions on, for example, yesterday's video, you will see that there's no commas, periods, capital letters, whatever in there. It's just automatic speech recognition. On one hand, that's great because we can use that as a starter, especially when to find periods where nothing is being said, so we can quickly skip over those except for meeting, going back and adding sound captions. But the speech and knowing where that is, that saves a lot of time. Whereas usually you needed to play the video 10 times over and over and over and over. And each time you heard something, you typed it in. The only downside is AI is not always on the ball, especially with Swinglish. With Swinglish and with uh, the winter garden typical uh, words, but the AI learned. There is, of course, there is, of course, enough jargon uh, going around. Um, let's be honest about it. Now we'll show you some of the things we found in the automatic subtitles, and we'll leave you to guess what was actually meant over there. And be aware, most of the time, the, the early ones we can figure out pretty soon if we hear the video. Some of the later ones, Sometimes even I get confused, like, is that what he's saying, or is it, hmm. well, maybe not the, on this slide, but there are definitely times where yeah. the AI just found something that matches, but isn't the right thing. So let's move on. Moving the goslins, videos on my steez, phase of the plastics, get up in my space, integral time and save, the other bad stacks. That's what we found. And all of those do mean the same, according to YouTube Auto again. Any guesses? <laughs> Silence in the room, so no? It is not more, nothing less or more than Wintergarten Wednesdays. For some reason, the AI, well, OK, it doesn't recognize Wintergarten. Fair enough. It's English. But then the Wednesday, Someone gets completely lost in the message and turns into the weirdest yeah. of things. When we found those, we had a lot of fun. We got some more. These are a little bit easier, maybe. We have Hallmark Machine next, Warranty next, Marble King's next, Democracy next, Monitor she makes, Martin's next, Emergency next, Murrow Machine X. What could it be? Marble Machine X, yes. It is quite surprising in the <laughs> various amounts of ways this gets through. All right, now these ones, we, we picked some because there are hundreds of them. Really random, so not related to Marble Machine Wintergarten and stuff, but also they, very funny. And I couldn't have some wine. Syrian Sea Machine. Maybe I didn't uh, pronounce that yeah. one right, but good enough. <laughs> City when, and then we also have yep. PI will soon see the XF cut 3D print of the chef. Plain obvious, right? Okay, well, Lucas, you should join the team maybe if you've got some uh, spare half hour or something. We can always use a reviewer. <laughs> oh. Actually, for your videos, Lucas, it's much easier. I think the AI has uh, a knack <laughs> of understanding the English or German accent in English, but it's, it's fine, it's fine. 
Well, so the solution of those. And I couldn't have some wine translated to, and I couldn't understand why. Right, we also didn't understand. So yes. CNC machine, okay, CNC machine, if you know, then you know. Detective Biron, yeah, that's Martin's old band, of course, so we can understand that the AI didn't quite get that, but it was still kind of odd to find that then. And yeah, the last one, just like... Again, CNC translated to, we'll soon see. Hmm. Sometimes these things make things up. Let's see. Drums and bar before girls have to face. It's written below. So I've answered your question. I just said how to come here, but picks up. It's like... We were really sitting in front of this or hearing that and we were like, huh? What? Doesn't make any sense at all. It Can looks like English. It looks like English. It looks like, yes. But actually, I was getting confused by the vibraphone. I like the, the second one. It translated from, so I'm answered your question to, so I'm searching for a new question. Hmm. Conveyor belt also failed to be detected. Oh, well. Now, want to help subtitling? That's quite easy. We put uh, maybe from your side of the screen a bit too small, but there's a QR code pointing to a message on the Wintergatan Discord. There you can react to that message with a particular icon, and that will give you access to the subtitle Steam channel and start on as just somebody who can see subtitles, get some updates on where we're going. Just be known that we don't get any videos sooner than everybody else. So no sneak peeks at videos, sadly. Yes, and that is how subtitles would look like on a video. So 